it had fascinated me for, you know, all through my childhood. Oh, the hell, there's one little man get all that up to the top of a 200 foot factory chimney and fix it all up. And, you know, like, if you went to talk to most of them, they couldn't really explain in, you know, language I understood how, how you did it because I don't think they really knew the self, you know, they'd just left school and been shown, you know, the way to do it and they battered at it in a wild sort of a fashion. And life went by and one day I met the man who sort of had been a draftsman and he'd, he'd only ended up in this crazy job through his father-in-law were a bit stuck who were a steeplejack and he'd gone help him out and he were like a bit of a cut above the rest with uh, the grey matter and he explained to me with a piece of chalk on the cobblestones in a mill yard in Bolton how, how you put the ladders up and how you put the staging up round the top of a chimney. First thing I've got to do is get me Borson's chair up and then I'm dangling in a position somewhere round about here on me three bits of rope and a little board. I have then got to chisel four holes into the brickwork six inches apart in a vertical plane and a couple of foot apart the other way. And the next thing, up comes four iron pins or iron dogs. The purpose of these is to support a great bark of timber, which will come up next, you see. I just put one of these dogs or pins in, in the hole on the left-hand side of the ladder. When the, the baton comes up the chimney, um, it's tied onto the line that goes from another pulley wheel at the top, right down to the floor. It's tied on in a position about four feet from one end, and then the rope runs up the side of it, and there's a lashing round there, which I can conveniently undo, and then I guide that piece of timber with you know Donald at the bottom supporting its weight and I guide it behind the ladder until I've got it going across here like so. And then I put the next pin or dog underneath that side of it, two more over the top. So then I've got it so it won't it won't go up and down, it won't waddle about. In a bosun's chair, if you've looked after all the rope and all the tattle, you, you know, you have a beautiful sense of security. Because, you know, you know what rope will hold a couple of tonnes and you weigh nowhere near that. And, like, really, it uh, pays you to look after your equipment because, you know, like that, Bloody roll breaks, you, you're dead. You know, it's uh, half a day out with the undertaker. Sort of, um, you know, like when I get on my seat board, I give it a little bounce and just see whether it's uh, safe or not, you know, and more often, well, it's never broke yet, you know, but I'm always ready to get all the bloody ladder if it does break. <laughs> The next thing that comes up are two things called legs, which are pieces of two and a half inch by about four inch timber with an all in each end. This baton has a series of holes drilled in it and I then proceed to bolt one on there and one over there like so. And then I lower myself down on my bosun's chair and mark the a suitable joint at the bottom and knock a pin through there and a pin through there. So I've then got that like all braced up quite solid. When that's been done on both sides of the chimney, the next thing to come up is two long steel rods which I use to connect both of these buttons together.
and I've got this big iron rod and I've got to send it over to the far button. And that means maybe 14 feet across, you know, or a 12 foot on a reasonable chimney stack. I've got to get that rod onto the other button so that it's in like line with an awl and as it scrapes down the face, give it a shove through the hole, you know. And if you're lucky, you'll get it through um, sort of thing. It's rather a tricky bit, man. See, all the modern men use aluminium scaffolding tubing now, but I, you know, I like this way of doing it. It's a bit more awkward, but when you've got it all up, it's quite solid. Then when you've finally got the rods through the two sets of holes, then you put the washers and the nuts on or a few packing pieces so you can slightly cramp them up around the chimney. Then after we've got the two buttons on and bolted together, the next stage of the game is planks which form like the platform that you walk on come up one at once of course or some of them like 16 18 feet long and when it arrives at the top it's tied on in a special way that when i untie it i can get like one plank across there like so and one across the like so and then another one next to it you see all the way around the top and so that when you walk on them, they don't go like up and down like that. You know, two iron plates with a bolt through the middle, which makes them two boards as one. And then there's iron hooks that hook them onto the buttons. So the wind can blow at 100 mile an hour and they'll still be there in the morning, you see. wind is every steeplejack's enemy, you know, like there's no way that, you know, you get the boards up and even if you, you've got to keep it flat all the time and you've got this feeling that it's floating on the wind, you know, which it really is. And if you turn it sideways on into the wind, it would have your way. In a wind like today, um, sort of all the chimneys, you know, you get about two or three inches swaying about, you know. It's actually all the chimney stacks swaying, you know, from side to side. You know, the most beautiful chimney with no cracks in it and nothing swears about, you know. Um, you have that feeling that there's something not quite right, you know, as though you've had about five pints of beer, like, you know, you think, you know, there's something moving somewhere, sort of thing, and, you know, it's all the bloody lot going like this. <laughs> If you're on the windy side of it, you don't feel it because the wind's buffeting you about, you see. But if you go around in the slipstream and sit on the stage nice and quiet and just lean against the wall, you can feel it moving, you know, rocking. Nice. A big gust and it, you'll feel it right over and then there's a bit of a lee in the wind. You feel it come back. Um, it's quite uh, unbelievable, you know. <laughs> There's not many people I experienced out like that. When we've got all the big planks in position, on the large diameter chimney, there's a great gap in the corner, so we've got four boards called corner boards that fit across the corners, you see, like so, which, like, stops you falling through the hole in the corner. <laughs> One 
once you've got the first staging up or the first deck up, you know, the firm basis for going higher up, then you chisel the holes for the for the next staging. Um, and you know, you can work quite comfortably as though you were on the ground. <coughs> When I've done it, when I've got all the gear up, you know, to me it's a bloody magnificent achievement, you know. Uh, you've like really got the world at your feet. Wonderful sensation is to turn round and put your back to the wall and so your vision's straight out and you appear to be just suspended in air, uh, you know, 200 feet up off the floor. And you're like, <laughs> as though you're just hanging off somewhere up in heaven, you know, in the clouds. Which is nice because you can sit there and have a smoke and sort of look about, you know, and survey the land. You know, I think about what I'm going to do with my engine at home tonight and what big problem can we solve. <laughs> you know, I've solved a lot of problems uh, sitting on tops of factory chimneys. <laughs> 